think it's harder for me to be a team player and improve by others because we're not all together and we're not scrimmaging. And when we are together, we can give each other like constructive criticism. So it's just harder to getting like an outside point of view of your mistakes or what you can do better to improve your ability as a soccer player. Well, it's more difficult to practice because we have to practice in small groups. And before last week, it was like just kind of like practicing with yourself because you really couldn't do like contact practice so I mean we grew like in like our dribbling skills but like actually like defense and stuff like that was hard to practice. Um, well up until yesterday we weren't allowed to have six people on the like court at a time so it was kind of difficult to play like three on three and still get the same um, skills. You just can't really like be with the coaches or like be like one on one because you got a social distance, so it's like harder to learn new stuff. So as a cheerleader, um, to grow as a team, we do stunting a lot because that takes a lot of team building. Um, right now, obviously we can't do that because that's out of the state protocol. So um, we can't talk anything over um, and we can't do stunts, so. I personally feel like with Morgan Girls Soccer, we take precautions really seriously. So we come in in different cohorts with like the L through Z, A through K. And then on the field, we're always six feet apart. We have our masks on when we're doing our water breaks or when we're not doing anything that's like strenuous, like on our lungs or breathing. So I feel safe. Because we're outside in the air. And, and I Being able to social distance and putting our stuff six feet apart, uh, we sit down. So we're not right next to each other after a game or a practice. Having our masks on unless we're not conditioning and being spread apart during cheer, uh, like six feet apart, makes me feel really safe. Um, since I'm a senior, it's going to be my last year playing. So playing a little bit is better than not playing at all and not having a season and never playing again for the rest of my life. So yeah. Well, it's nice to be active. It's nice to like actually be involved in a school sport and with other members of the school. And I mean, volleyball's not playing at all would mean we wouldn't be able to grow. Obviously, right now there's no competition, but um, this would be our time to start that. Right now, we're just gonna go over the basics with the incoming freshmen. We go over um, some dances, cheers. We can do spread apart. Uh, and we can also cheer for other teams in the school besides football, so it's not that big of a deal for us. Um, I Definitely challenging because they now, for volleyball, are playing with masks on, which is different than ever before. And if you've ever run around with a mask on, it's not easy. Uh, but I've been really impressed with my players so far because they have taken the proper precautions and they've been really good about doing what's been asked and following all of the protocols to keep everyone safe and I think that it's been great that they see the importance of it and are willing to make the adjustments that they need to. The biggest adjustment is definitely the masks. Um, also the fact that we had to play outside for volleyball, which is definitely something that's never been done before, ever. So that was a huge adjustment, and I think that it was hard at first, but we were just happy to be out there and to be able to play. Um, and I think that little things here and there that they'll start to hopefully pull back on, such as having spectators and uh, being able to have more people in the gym, things like that. I think we're, we're working towards it, but we do have a long road ahead of us in making sure that everyone stays safe. Well, I think all sports were, were impacted and definitely all of our student athletes and coaches and the whole community definitely have, have felt some of the modifications that we've had to put in place, some of the mitigation strategies. Um, but I say I would say the most impacted sport um, is probably an obvious one is football. Um, the fact that they can't have um, an 11 on 11 tackle football season this fall is something that um, I know a lot of us feel bad about and, and really wish was different. But 
right now for safety reasons that, uh, that that's the decision that's being made. So all summer and then weekly now, I've been on calls with other ADs across the state and um, a lot of the strategies, strategies that CIC put in place were designed to be in place across the state. So most schools that I know of are following um, similar protocols that we're following. Um, some differences might be according to the facility. So, you know, it depends if benches are used in certain areas or if they're removed or if we can change the cross country course to ensure six feet apart at all times and those sorts of small things um, at the facility level. But I, I would say across the board, especially on the shoreline, um, all the same strategies that we're using are being implemented. Well, of course, all of them are following the health and safety protocols, um, but I've been particularly impressed with, with um, boys soccer is doing a great job, girls soccer is doing a great job, field hockey is doing a great job. I mean, really across the board, volleyball is doing an awesome job. Across the board, we're really doing a great job, I think, of making sure that we have entry and exit um, areas for our cohorts, we're cohorting, we're uh, making sure that masks are on when appropriate, when they're not exercising. And so I think our students have really bought into our co and our coaches are doing a great job with leadership on that. So obviously if I had a, a magic wand, I would wave it and the, uh, the pandemic would be over and we would go back to what we knew was normal. But um, I think for now, this is the new normal and sort of taking it slow and day by day and, and figuring out what the health metrics indicate and what safety precautions we need to put in place uh, is really the new normal. So it's hard to make predictions right now because things have changed so drastically. And if you would have asked me in the summer to make a predicted prediction about where we are now, I probably couldn't have. So um, I guess that's sort of a, a way to around the question, but I, I really mean that we have to take it slow and, and take it day by day and, and let the health metrics lead us and, and guide us in making safety decisions for, for our kids.